The book, it's about trying to communicate in today's world of information overload. Uh, the title is Don't Be Such a Scientist, but it could be titled Don't Be Such a Lawyer, Don't Be Such an Accountant, Don't Be Such a Politician, Don't Be Such a Doctor. Basically any profession that involves trying to communicate a lot of information to the general public. I don't know that the book has the be all and end all solutions to those problems, but it's certainly got a different way of looking at a number of these issues that comes from my journey, my 30 years of being a scientist for 15 years and then going off into this alien environment of Hollywood for 15 years and now reporting back, basically. We can see the, the science communication problem in things like global warming. We also saw the science disconnect on the, in the field of evolution with the feature documentary that we did called Flock of Dodos. How does that pattern, looking back through the fossils, differ anything from the historical record of George Washington being our president? Did it... Because there are people actually alive that saw George Washington being the president. Nobody was actually alive that saw a lungfish crawl out of the water. Huh. Okey <laughs> so, you know, I think most scientists would agree that we need to improve science communication, but the real question is how. Some of the most effective theories about communication talk about the arousal and fulfillment of your audience's desires. It, you want to pique their interest and then you want to satisfy that, that interest that you've piqued. And if you fail in either regard, you haven't had an effective message. If, if you don't arouse them, they never get engaged and never connect and never listen. If you don't fulfill them, they walk away saying, well, you know, that wasn't a very satisfying talk. Arouse and fulfill is a major part of the second chapter of the book. And sometimes information alone is not enough. Um, you have to come down out of your head uh, all the way down into the heart with sincerity and sometimes all the way down to the gut with a little humor and intuition and maybe even once in a while to the lowest organs with a little bit of sex appeal. So how are you going to motivate people? That's been one of the challenges of our Shifting Baselines Ocean Conservation Project of the last seven years. And one of the resources that we've drawn on have been celebrities. In 2003 we put together a public service announcement where we drew together 20 comic celebrities to create a bad symphony for the ocean that was conducted by Jack Black. And we got a distributor who managed to get it aired over 300 stations around the country. And then they went and asked some of these television stations who aired it, why did you choose this public service announcement? And the main thing that came back was not that it was a powerful message or that it was particularly well done, but simply that they liked it. Likeability is a hugely important factor. Just take a look at like John Stewart. Recently, the New York Times asked whether he is the most trusted man in America. Likeability is the subject of the fourth chapter of the book. So overall, the whole book comes together into a single message, which is not by any stretch the idea of don't be a scientist, but simply don't be such a scientist.